So we're going to talk a little bit about the Jack Adams Award this year for the uh, top coach in the National Hockey League. The broadcasters get to vote on that, and boy, they got a tough choice. There's a lot of really good choices. We're going to go through five guys that we think should be on the top of the list, and we'll start with uh, my moment of zen, always, always, Daryl Sutter. Whenever the Flames play, I go right after the game and look for that. <laughs> they post it on social media. There he is, Mr. Sunshine, Daryl Sutter. <laughs> my God, boy, what a great coaching job he's done. And the reason I like listening to him deal with the media, because he, he doesn't say a lot, but he gives you a lot of wisdom if you really think yeah. about the things he's saying. And think about this season. He came in late last year. He went to that team and he said, guys, listen, you're not in good enough shape. We have to commit to being in better condition this year to play the way we need to play. And there they are. Look at the results. No playoffs last year. This is a team that's going to close in on 100 points. They're likely going to win that division. Johnny Gaudreau is having the best season he ever had. Daryl's made a difference. He's very efficient with his words. He maybe only gives you a few, but they, they certainly mean a lot. Yeah. So I think that's important for a player, too. I never played for Daryl. I played for Brent Sutter of, of yeah. that family of 95 sutters a lot of sutters um and you know sometimes when you hear when you're hearing a coach all the time talking and say you get to a point you're like all right that's enough buddy you know like and so uh, when he speaks we listen he's done a great job there in calgary yeah and as a player you know where you stand in his books right and and he'll tell you when if you're not playing well or you're going to sit or your ice time is going to go down and which makes the player aware of of what's going on what needs to be better so i i love that as a coach there's no uh, you're not lying to me. This, you're a straight shooter, which he is, and and yeah, he doesn't mince his words on uh, on the post game interviews. We should uh, roll a few of these later if we yeah, can we get them. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I, the, the one thing I would say about Daryl and talking to players who played from over the years, yes, it's very tough. He could wear you out, but Daryl only expects you to be as good as you can be. Yeah. He doesn't expect Mike Rupp to be Guy Lafleur. He expects you to be Mike Rupp, and I think as a player, you probably appreciate that. Yeah, I, I think that he. When you have coaches that simplify the game like that, like Daryl's like, this is how we do it. There's no negotiation. There's no negotiations on how we're going to play. And if you're going to play that way, you're going to play. If you don't, you don't. You're not going to be a part of it. You know, and it's very clear cut, just like Scotty said. Like, you know where you stand. So you go out there, you do a job. Um, you're going to, I don't know if you're going to get rewarded with a, a, you know, a big hug, but like, <laughs> it's, you're going to get that look. Like, we yeah. all seen it, Scotty. We yeah. played for guys. Like, Lou Lamarillo was the same way. Like, I knew when I did a good job, when I got on the bus on the road and Lou sitting in the front seat, when you got on the bus, if Lou gave you the nod like that, it's like, you did something right. Yeah, you did something right. If it's you get on the bus and he just goes, we'll go look at his papers, <laughs> maybe not so much. You know what I mean? So it's like there's ways that it, it goes. Yeah. He, you know what you're going to get. You know what the expectations are. And I think that's huge. And the roles, I think, in Calgary are, are especially defined yes. for, for each guy, right? So I know that, you know, Mike Rupp, you need to go out and hit, bring energy to the group. Uh, Johnny G, you got to go up there, fly, uh, wheel and deal, you know. So everyone has their roles, and, and you're not trying to do something you're not, just like you said, EJ. Yeah. Nonverbal communication. Sometimes <laughs> He's not be- asking, but that's the one thing yeah. when people talk about old school coaches. He's not asking. Asking Johnny Gaudreau to be a grinder. Yeah. Johnny, go do your thing. Just be responsible. Yep. Have you know, understand when and when not, and go do your thing. Dance out there. So yeah. I think that 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 uh, he's done a good job of navigating all the different personalities. Yeah, and he has Johnny Gaudreau has been dancing oh, yeah. big time this year. All right, let's talk about Gerard Glant with the New York Rangers. All that success in Vegas. Uh, this guy has had a couple of different jobs. I think that he just has gotten better in each stop that he's had. And, boy, he's come in and really made a statement for the Rangers. Yeah, I got a, I got a funny Gerard Gallant story, yeah. and this came up uh, a couple weeks ago in Pittsburgh. Uh, I got into an elevator with a few of the Ranger players. Mm-hmm. They were playing in Pittsburgh, and Ryan Strom was there. And we were talking, and I was asking about Turk, how he liked him. He yeah. was, oh, straight shooter. Same kind of stuff we just said about, yeah. about uh, uh, Daryl. Uh, Daryl, thank you. And, uh, you know, I remember back when I was in Columbus. We were getting into a shootout, and we had Sergey Fedorov on the team. And at that time, maybe Sergey was making six and a half million or whatever. And I remember, you know, the coach has to give the list to the referee before yeah. the shootout. And uh, Fedorov turns around, Sergey turns around, and says to Gerard, uh, "Hey, Gerard, uh, do you want me to go?" And Gerard looks, and he goes, "I can't say what he said, but he goes." You make six and a half million dollars. You blankety blank <laughs> better bet you're going out there. Yeah. But like it laughs. He, yeah. You know what you're getting. He shoots yeah. you straight. And, and and Ryan Strom said the same thing. We love this guy. He's funny, but he's to the point. Yeah. Everybody knows where they stand. He's done a, a heck of a job with the Rangers this year. Yeah, well, Daryl Sutter, he'll not pat you on the back. He won't make you, you know, feel good and have fun out there. I think Gerard Gallant. 
everything you hear from this guy, he's, he's a player's coach. He makes the, the rink fun every day when you go in there, changes up practices, and, and those are the things that you want to do as a player. Things get stale if you do the same things all the time or you're, you know, someone's badgering you all the time. And But I think he just uplifts everyone. Everyone's in good spirits. And when you're winning, obviously, hard not to have a yeah. smile on your face, right? But uh, he's, he's got these guys playing well in New York. Yeah, and, you know, as you said, he's, he can be straight with guys when he wants. I remember early in the year, Late in the game, they had just won in the last seconds against the Buffalo Sabres, and Mika Zibanejad, one of his star players, was really getting into it, one of the ref referees. And right in front of everybody on the bench, he really lit into Mika Zibanejad, like, yeah. you know, basically enough. Yeah. And to me, that sent a message of who was in charge, and I think everybody gets that. You guys were players. You know how it goes. You get the message. So really nice job by Gerard Gallant with the New York Rangers. How about Todd McClellan in L.A.? I mean, that's been Incredible. a heck of a story this year. Yeah, I, you know what, I, I, unfortunately in a lot of these awards that we're talking about, it's a lot of it's due to what you've done lately, okay? And, and recency I, bias, recency right? Recency bias, thank you. And L.A., though, if you're just looking at it, if you're going to zoom out, you know, 20,000 feet, for what this team, what we thought they would meet, be or not know what they're going to be, uh, he's been absolutely incredible what he's got this group doing. They've dealt with injuries. They've dealt with infusing young talent, getting older players to play um, maybe above expectations. So I, th I thought uh, Tom McClellan's been unbelievable this season. Yeah, he's been great. And and to teach these young kids how to play defense, how to play with structure, that's that's one thing I've I've heard about him and his coaching style. It's it's, it's uh, system. And that's how you got to play. You got to work hard. And, and the veterans are doing a great job with the young kids. And, and uh, just a good atmosphere to be around that rink. And, and uh, Todd's been doing a great job with that. Yeah, you can see the numbers right there. All those little areas where you try to get better. And they've had so many injuries over the last, you know, month, six weeks. I mean, think about it. Drew Doughty. What does it mean when your top defense yeah. goes 27, 28 minutes a night, goes out of your lineup? Then they had five defensemen out at one time. It's hard to handle things. It seems like he's tried to keep it together. It's been a struggle of late. How often they're hanging in? How often do new guys come to a team and work right, right away and not and have a couple? I mean, Dino Arvidsson, you need a little bit of help. You need coaches yeah. putting you in winning situations. Yeah. He's done an incredible job with that. Yeah, it's been a it's been a great run for Todd McClellan. They've got a tough back to back. Chicago and Colorado both on the road. Vegas is breathing down their neck. So uh, Todd and company will. Uh, they can get three out of those four points. Maybe can keep pushing forward. We'll see if they can get there. How about Dean Evison in Minnesota? It's been a, a really good season for the Minnesota Wild. They got a big, strong team. I think Billy Guerin has really defined what he wants with that group as the manager. And I think Dean Evison has been someone that's really held everybody accountable and done a nice job. You know, it's funny. And all these coaches we're talking about, that word accountability. Dean Evison brought accountability to Minnesota to the degree of a I don't care who you are. He sat Kevin Fiala at different times this year. He said, no, if you're not going to do it the right way, you're not going to play. And if Fiala comes back and gets a game winner and he responds the right way, I think he's, the accountability he's brought to this wild team has put him in the position they're at. Yeah, and, and making the lineups. The lineups are huge, right? they got Ryan Hartman, uh, signed a three-year deal extension, $1.7 million a year, and he's playing like a first yeah. liner. Should yeah. be making five or six million. And they million. put him in Pretty the good middle value. with, with yeah. Zuccarello and uh, Caprice. And, he's and usually worked, play, Yeah, right? and he usually plays wing, and you play with those two guys. How are you not? Not going to get uh, points playing with those guys is having a heck of a season. So, you know, kind of doing that, tinkering your lineup to, to make it a, a deep team. And now, well, how big are these guys, too? You got Felino, you got Delorier. Uh, these guys just come at you and hit you. And, Greenway. And Greenway, yeah. He puts them in prominent roles, right? Like, he, yeah. he doesn't just say, all right, your job is just to go finish check. No, like, you're playing meaningful minutes. Like, Felino's got 21 goals. I mean, Greenway is playing bigger than he ever has. Yep. So he's empowered these guys. Go out, do your thing. I'm going to put you in the right spots. Yeah, it's been a it's been a heck of a year for the Minnesota Wild. And one more I want to get to before we run out of time is John Hines with the Nashville Predators. Yeah. Uh, you know, to me, and this is a similar story with Daryl Daryl Sutter, is that John Hines, and he did it in New Jersey too. He got a lot out of Taylor Hall. That was the year Taylor Hall won the MVP, right? The Hart Trophy. He has gotten those really star players, Johansson, Duchesne. Even Yossi, who's already a great player, but like he said, they have great years, it seems like, under John Hines, Rupper. So, I mean, that's an impressive thing for a coach to do, to bring out the very best in your best players. Yeah, I feel like John Hines, he, he, 
he makes you push the pace. He, he, I've done practices of his. He was uh, assistant, uh, or sorry, he was coaching, I think, Wilkes-Barre, and in training camp at Pittsburgh, he ran a couple practices. The tempo, boom, boom, boom. Like, you're practicing high tempo, you're playing it at high tempo. He demands a lot out of his team. So it takes a little while for everybody to, I don't want to say buy-in, but to get used to that. Like, it's different. Mm -hmm. And now they've got them going. They've got this identity. And they're just kind of a little bit like Dean Evison. They got a, got a big, strong, heavy team that's mean, and they play that way. And they come <laughs> at you. They go, yeah. they go, they go. And Matthew Shane, to put him in the right positions, I mean, he's got 38 goals. Having an unbelievable like, year. I mean, you got to give a ton of credit to Matthew Shane, yep. but I think a lot of that's to the coach as well, is, is navigating through this. Yeah, and I think he's brought the leadership group into to his coach's circle. Uh, if that makes any sense, yeah. you know, instead of just having the, the players out there, he's brought those guys in. You know, what's going on with the power play? How are you guys feeling? You guys need a day off. And, and that makes the player, as a player, yeah. you're like, man, I, you know, I like this coach. You know, I play a little bit harder. You play a little bit smarter. And you just feel like a, a more co cohesive unit uh, instead of just the coaches are here, the players are there, and there's no uh, talking uh, between the coaches so, and players. So it, it's, it's done a good job, I think, for, like you said, Duchesne, uh, Ryan Johansson having a career year as well. And, and those are the guys that you need to, to play well to get the playoffs and then obviously have, uh, have good playoff runs. Yeah, you were in Nashville, so you know some of those guys. Are you <clears> seeing like more juice out of them this year than maybe in years gone by, even though they're a little longer in the tooth? Yeah, if I could say one thing, just don't take Roman Yossi off the ice. This yeah. guy's absolutely, absolutely. That's I'm, a good coach, right? Yeah, exactly. Roman I could, Yossi I could coach him. I could yeah. be a good D coach. But yeah. no, it, it, that's a fun team to watch. They're heavy. They hit. They they stick together. A bunch of those uh, clips that we're just running, it's, it's, yeah. a, it's a scrum after a whistle. Yeah. And all yeah. Five guys are there, right? Yeah. You know, you don't have one guy just kind of, you know, looking for quarters down the, <laughs> down on the ice. You know, I don't want to get involved. Everyone's there, so it's a it's a it's a team atmosphere that they got going on in Nashville, and and uh, great job by uh, David Poyle doing that again.